Thank you for taking the HistoryBuff.com virtual tour of the Abraham Lincoln Home in Springfield, Illinois. My name is Rick, and I will be your tour guide today. This foyer is where the Lincolns greeted visitors to their home. With the exception of the stairs handrail, the rest of the rails were not there when the Lincolns lived there. The railings were added for tourism purposes. If you look to the left, that's the formal parlor. The middle stairway, of course, led to the bedrooms upstairs. And the room to the right is the family room. We are now in the formal parlor of the Lincoln family home. Since the Lincolns only used this parlor for formal gatherings and receptions, the best furniture, wallpaper, and decorative items were kept in this room. Because of the fine furniture in this room, the children, all boys, were not permitted to play in this room. As Lincoln's fame grew, these gatherings became more important for his career. His wife, Mary Todd, was very talented in this area as she was raised in a wealthy family where manners and grace were strictly enforced. This parlor is where Abraham Lincoln was first told of his nomination to run for president in 1860. If you look close, you can see that this parlor could easily be divided into two rooms because it has a folding wall which could divide the room. For large gatherings, the wall was left closed as they are now. When closed off, Lincoln often used this back portion as a study and was often found lying on the black couch and reading. Before the first remodel of the home, the back portion of this parlor was Abe and Mary's bedroom. Eddie, Willie, and Tad were born in this room. Some of the furniture in this home was actually owned and used by the Lincolns. However, when the Lincolns moved to Washington, D.C., much of their furniture was auctioned off because living in the White House, they no longer had a need for furniture. What is here now is a combination of original Lincoln furniture and period furniture. We are now in the Lincoln dining room. Due to the addition of the railing to accommodate tourists, there are only two chairs at the table. At the foot of the table with her back to the wall was Mary Todd Lincoln's place. The two chairs on the left were Willie's and Tad's. In 1860, the boys were 10 and 7 years old. The head of the table, with his back to the railing, was Abraham's place at the table. We are now in the Lincoln family room. After dinner, the family often would come to this room. Usually, Abe and Mary could be found reading. At other times, Mary would be sewing. In 1800s America, only the upper class could afford to purchase clothes ready-made. For the rest, they had to make their own clothes. Mary purchased the fabric and did this task for the entire Lincoln family. The children were permitted to play in this room. The box you see on the table is a stereoscope. Special photographs could be purchased and used for the stereoscope. Doing so made it appear 3D. It was a great way to educate people since stereo optic cards could be purchased showing landmarks around the world, famous art, manners, and so forth. The family room also served another function. Informal parties were often held here. The parties in this room were less formal than the ones held in the parlor. One of Mary's favorites was a strawberry party. Guests would gather and eat strawberries with cream. It was here that Abe and Mary held several parties for Willie and Tad, including one for which they invited 50 children. This is also where the family dog Fido and the Lincoln's numerous cats spent time. We are now in the guest bedroom. Family and friends of the Lincoln stayed in this guest room. It was originally Robert Todd's bedroom. In 1853, when he entered a private academy, the room was turned into a guest room. In 1859, Robert failed the Harvard College entrance exams, so his parents enrolled him at Phillips Exeter Academy. Here he spent one year preparing for the exams, which he passed the following year, allowing him to enter Harvard from which he graduated in 1864. From 1855, with a new remodel, until 1861, when the Lincolns left for Washington, D.C., this was Abraham Lincoln's bedroom. As was customary in Victorian times, a husband and wife had separate bedrooms. The desk in the back corner is the lap desk Abe used. In the midst of the Lincoln-Douglas debates, Douglas told the crowd that Abraham Lincoln was a two-faced person. Being great at wit, Abe replied back, Mr. Douglas, if I had two faces, why would I wear this one? We are now in Mary Todd Lincoln's bedroom. 
It is often said that behind every successful man is a woman. This was never more true than with Abe and Mary Lincoln. Mary, having been raised in an upper-class home with servants, knew the proper manners and taught Abe the social graces he needed to effectively present himself to congressmen and other influential people. It was also Mary that kept on giving Abe encouragement and the will to keep trying. As a point of irony, when Abe was away from home, Mary lacked self-confidence. Abe hired a neighbor boy to spend each night in the Lincoln home to help with Mary. This is Willie and Tad's bedroom. For a time, Mary shared her room with the two youngest children, Willie and Tad. When Mary and Abraham shared a bedroom, they would have also shared it with Robert and Eddie as well. This was a common sleeping arrangement during this era. When the children were considered old enough, they received their own room. In Willie's and Tad's case, this meant moving across the hall to this room. Both occupied this room until their father was elected president and the family moved to Washington, D.C. This room was used by a hired girl. While the Lincoln's laundress and cook returned to their homes at night, the hired girl would sleep here. Hired girls were usually about 14 or 15 years old. The average wage was about $1.50 per week plus room and board. Hired girls' chores included making fires, emptying chamber pots, cleaning lamps, and carrying water from the well and cistern. The kitchen was the center of activity in the home. Cooking was not an easy task. By having to use a wood stove, it was hard to maintain an even temperature when baking. It took quite a skill to know just when and how much wood to put in the stove to make things come out right. The Lincolns hosted many parties, occasionally with 150 to 200 guests. The kitchen was often crowded with Mary, her hired girl, and the cook. Lincoln would help by milking the cow and fetching the wood, two duties he had performed since childhood. This concludes our virtual tour of the Abraham Lincoln home in Springfield, Illinois. Thank you for visiting.